So what ended up bringing me to Thailand was I graduated in 2010. I had lost over 100 pounds, and I was literally doing nothing, nothing. I was training every day. I didn't have a job. I was just trying to figure figure stuff out because I, when I graduated, I had no plans. I was just like, I need to get the hell out of school. So I ended up flying out here in April of 2011 in Phuket. Uh, it was my first trip to Thailand. Um, so I trained at Sinbi Muay Thai. Now, this is the old Sinbi, if, you, uh, if you're familiar with Rawai. Mm -hmm. If you're going towards Patong and Kata through the Naiharn area, there's, if you look today, the building's still there. It's, it's kind of set up. It's still for rent or for sale. There's, like I think, like 10 rooms. They had two rings in there. And I had, I just knew the Muay Thai back from when I was training with him and all that stuff. And it turns out when I was there, and I didn't know who he was at the time, I was got to work with Sanshai. Mm. My first time in Thailand, I'm training with, at the time, uh, Bua Kao was kind of out of training. Sanshai was considered, I think, number one pound for pound at the time. And you get to, I ended up getting work clinch with him sometimes. And, and then I get home and people are like, do you know who you just worked with? And I was like, no. He's just a nice Thai guy. And it's like, oh, that's Sanshai. And then you go look him up. And this is early days of YouTube, 2011, you know. And you're watching this film of him handstand kicking people. And you're just like, well, I'm glad he was so nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I mean, overall, just in MMA, that's the thing I love about the sport. And training with Tim, it was the, kind of the same way. We'd be sitting there. And, like, one Saturday I'm sitting there getting dressed in the locker room. And in walks Boris Griffin. Mm. And we just... I get to train with Forrest Griffin that day. And that's just one of the beautiful things I think about MMA in general is that, I, and I compare it like this. I'm like, can you go play one-on-one -on -one with Michael Jordan? Not going to happen. Can you go catch pra passes from Aaron Rodgers or Drew Brees? No. Can you go, can you go pass the ball Cristiano Ronaldo? No, you can't. But you can come to a place like Phuket and you can, you can go work. I've gotten to work with guys like Yoshihiro Akiyama. Uh, I got to spar with him at Tiger. You, you get to work with these high, 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 top-of-the-level guys, and they will work with you because they need the work, as long as you're respectful. And it's a great opportunity to see how the sport really affects everyone at all levels. Yeah, because they're looking for certain training partners and body types as well when they're coming in these MMA gyms. Exactly. And, and again, in the earlier days in the sport, there just wasn't that many of us, especially in the heavier weight divisions. So you'd get opportunities where it would just be like, wow, they brought in a Gracie just to do a seminar with us, you know? Yeah. Now, uh, I, I want to talk quick about your when you came in 2011 mm -hmm. and, and I'm as we discussed, we've known each other for a couple of years. Uh, you came, you went, you came, you went between Thailand and whatnot. 